Vice beers and wheat beers are probably the fastest growing sector of the UK beer market right now. But the question really is, do you know how to pour yours? Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes there has been a lot of talk recently about vice beers, wheat beers, wit beers which is slightly different but related but you know the wheaty foamy frothy good German stuff and actually a lot of UK craft breweries are starting to make their own as well which got me thinking well actually no that didn't get me thinking what got me thinking was a few weeks ago I sat in this very spot with this very camera very microphone everything else looking at these two beers and I just basically wanted to come to a conclusion about which of the generically best supermarket wheat beers or vice beers were the best ones. These are available in pretty much every UK supermarket. We've got the Erdinger vice beer and the Franziskaner vice beer and yeah it was just a comparison test. I did the video, I did it to full but I wasn't happy with it because well firstly the pour was catastrophic on both of them it was going everywhere and I was just like I don't really know what I've done wrong I've had these before and not had quite such a big issue I've had plenty out and about and they've been very nice and then when it came to tasting they were also just not quite there not what I remember thankfully though a very helpful subscriber of mine put a comment in who is actually from Germany knows a lot about vice beers and kind of gave me a few tips I'll pop that on screen now as well which incidentally was actually on a previous video where I probably poured one badly as well because that one never actually made the light of day but I thought I'd go on a mission to find out exactly the best way to pour one of these style beers so you don't have to make the same mistake that I did because I, well, I'm clearly an idiot. So I will tell you a bit more about both of these beers and what I think of them, but to be honest, I don't really want to release that video because I don't feel like it was a true test. And because in some ways, the way you pour it will massively impact the flavor. So let's get right down to that first. Which one are we going to go for though? We're just going to do one of these today and I'm thinking... I'm thinking Francis Carner, actually. I think I'm going to go for the Francis Carner. I'm going to pop the Erdinger over to the side here. And then, yeah, let's get into this. So, what do you need? You need a nice, cold bottle of Vice Beer. It's, I'm sure everyone's seen this before. It is just properly nice stuff. Set it down. Don't shake it about because, first thing you need to know, Vice beers are much more carbonated than pretty much any other beer style, including lagers, which means, well, their tendencies to get excitable are very, very high. With all that in mind then, your glass of choice is pretty damn important. Now, obviously, if you've got a real legit Vice beer glass, they look like this, uh, then great, go grab it. But if you're like me and most people in the UK, we, we just don't have them. I would love some. I don't really drink enough of them to go and get one. And then also it makes it difficult then to do comparisons if you've only got one. I don't need a beer review problems, very much, very specific to me there. But anyway, normally what I'd do is I'd go for something that was just elegantly shaped, a pint glass. And I've got a few of these different shapes. Some are a bit taller and more bulbous like the proper vice beer glasses. It doesn't matter what I've poured it in, it never quite works. And the reason, one of the reasons at least, is on the end there. Can you see that? See all those little bits on the bottom? I never remember what they're called. But the little ditties in the bottom, they excite beer, basically. That's what gives you a nice head on your lager and that sort of thing. So we don't want one of those, which means you need a pint glass, ideally, with nothing on the bottom. Now, that's going to limit you a bit. That's going to limit you to like tankards, very trad pint glasses. But there are a few this style, you know, kind of the straight up taller ones. Um, this one's actually an old, really old Witchwood one. What's the date on this? 2012. Uh, you can date pint glasses, by the way. That little M number. What's that? There you go. See that M12? This was 2012. Now, you might also notice there's a bit of water in the bottom of here. That's because the next thing you really need to do is have a freshly rinsed pint glass. That helps the vice beer get into the glass without any sudden disruption which is exactly what you want so i'm just going to spin that last bit that's in there there you go water is now out freshly rinsed pint glass you are ready at this point basically now take our bottle opener 
gently release the cap and then allegedly pour at a 45 degree angle. Now, you'll notice already that is a much better experience than those videos I showed you earlier of me doing it and it just going everywhere. You'll also notice though, that there is a centimeter or so of beer left in the bottom of this bottle. And that is because there's yeast in wheat beer, vice beer, and you want that in your glass. Very traditionally in the UK, we'd avoid that at any cost. We don't like traditionally, we do nowadays with craft beer and crazy hazy pails and all that stuff, but traditionally, trad beer, with yeast in it was avoided. You keep the yeast in the bottle, but this time we want to swill it all up, make it nice and foamy, because that will get us the ultimate flavor in here, which is why I wasn't tasting what I should have been before, because I didn't do this part, and also it will help finish this off nicely. Now you've got it all in there, it's probably quite foamy, and let's just get that all, you see it change color, and you end up, hopefully, with a full pint, with a beautifully foamy head on top. That is how you pour your vice beer. It is a little bit more involved. It's a little bit ritualistic, but look at that pint. To say we're sat here 10 days ago or so, just going, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. This is insane. Well, that looks very, very appetizing indeed. And I can probably actually get some aromas out of it, unlike last time, because there was a solid half pint's worth of foam on the top. It's got this beautiful velvety, sweet confectionery, the squishy sweets, kind of kind of like Belgian yeast, but it's slightly different than this. It's a bit more, you know, foamy banana, a bit of coriander seed, a bit of a bit of spice anyway. A little bit of spice. It's just bready. It's what you expect from a proper German beer. So let's give it a go. Cheers. That is absolutely beautiful. And that is how you pour your vice beer. If you want to know the answer about which one of these you should buy out of your local supermarket. The one I poured today, the Francis Corner, this is a bit more full-bodied, fruity, rich, yeasty. It's got more funk to it, it's a little bit more, yeah, it's on the fruitier and depthier side. Meanwhile, the Erding is more kind of wheat lager territory. It's still got a lot of similarities, but it's a little bit more crisp, a little bit more I guess traditional German lager, bready malt thing. And yeah, so depends which one tickles your fancy to be honest, because they're both absolutely fantastic. There you go, you didn't need me to put out a 15 minute video to come to that conclusion after all. But whichever one you buy, that's how you pour it. And it turns out it works, so I'm happy. And that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you'll be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.